Coming up on Fresh Dew with Pastor Inkechi Ene. Whatever trouble will take you running under the shadow of the Almighty, that trouble will only exist for a day. That trouble will only exist for a short time. That trouble has an expiration date, as a great man of God once said. That trouble cannot last forever. Hello, hello everyone. My name is Soton and it's my pleasure to welcome you to Fresh Dew. This week, Pastor Kechi has chosen to air an old classic message series titled Unveiling Psalm 91 as first preached on TV in 2002. But guess what? It is very fresh and relevant considering the troubled times in the world today. Psalm 91 is a very powerful psalm and we all need to have a revelation of it at this time. So settle down and let's dive into Psalm 91 with a much younger but very anointed person, Kichi Ene. Get ready, get ready, get ready, get ready. This March. Get ready. For the time of maturity has come. Makaira Moments. A two-edged sword teaching seminar with Pastor Nkechi Ene. You've got to understand that your name is in the finished job report of Jesus. When he said it is finished, he referred to you. On Thursday the 19th, Friday the 20th, and Sunday the 22nd of March 2020. At 6 p.m. on Thursday and Friday, and 8 a.m. and 10.30 a.m. on Sunday. At the Carpenters Church, Greenville of Ajipo Iwafe Road, Malfo, Rumeme, Port Harcourt. We'll take you this way till you get to the School of Christ where you learn that you can only be justified by faith and the law itself cannot justify you. Makairo moments. You don't want to miss this. Unveiling Psalm 91. Unveiling Psalm 91. Let's read the whole of Psalm 91. He who dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress. My God in Him I will trust. Surely He shall deliver you from the snare of the fowler and from the perilous pestilence. He shall cover you with His feathers and under His wings you shall take refuge. His truth shall be your shield and buckler. You shall not be afraid of the terror by night, nor of the arrow that flies by day, nor of the pestilence that walks in darkness, nor of the destruction that lays waste at noonday. A thousand may fall at your side, and ten thousand at your right hand, but it shall not come near you. Only with your eyes shall you look and see the reward of the wicked, because you have made the Lord, who is my refuge, even the Most High, your dwelling place. No evil shall befall you, nor shall any plague come near your dwelling. For he shall give his angels charge over you, to keep you in all your ways. In their hands they shall bear you up, lest you dash your foot against a stone. You shall tread upon the lion and the cobra, the young lion and the serpent you shall trample underfoot. Because he has set his love upon me, therefore I will deliver him. I will set him on high because he has known my name. He shall call upon me and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honor him. With long life, I will satisfy him and show him my salvation. With long life, I will satisfy him and show him my salvation. So we're going to be taking this psalm verse by verse and we're going to be unveiling the, the wealth and the beauty in Psalm 91. Psalm 91 is such a powerful psalm is such an awesome psalm and like i said earlier it's one of my favorite psalms so let's start straight away from verse one it says he who dwells in the secret place of the most high he who dwells in the secret place of the most high that word dwell or dwells means to sit down it means to remain to settle to marry and to abide look at the meaning of, the, of that word again to sit down to remain to settle to marry 
to abide. So straight away, what you pick up is that that word has a sense of permanency to it. So immediately, the, the psalm starts by beginning to target the people that this psalm is for. You see, a lot of us have a very magical approach to the psalm. Some people, you know, you read a psalm and you take the psalm and you anoint your Bible with oil on the page of the psalm and you put it under your pillow and you put your head on it and you, you know, therefore you shall be protected through the night and all of that. No, 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 all that is magic and witchcraft. The, Psalm 91 starts immediately by beginning to say, he who dwells in the secret place. So first of all, it's beginning to tell you, look, this psalm is for you. If you have made a decision to abide with God, if you've made a decision to settle with God, if you've made a decision to be married to God, not to be a boyfriend or a girlfriend to God. He say, no, somebody who can go and come. No, he says, if, if you dwell, he who dwells in the secret place. So it's not referring to one, you know, you're a Christian today, you're an unbeliever tomorrow. You're born again today, today you have backslidden tomorrow. Uh-uh. He who dwells, he who has a place of permanency in the secret place. And that word secret place is the covering or the shelter or place of secrecy of the Most High. And we're going to look at that later. So let's go again to the beginning. He who dwells, he who has a permanent residence in the secret place of the Most High. Now let's stop and look at that word Most High. You know, every single thing written in the Word of God has a reason for its being there. So the word Most High is the word Elion, is the word Elion. And scholars have had much debate as to whether this name should be, you know, listed as one of the divine names of God. But you see, Elion refers to the overwhelming majesty and the exaltedness of God. One thing we can say is that Elion is not necessarily a covenant name of God. I'll say it again. Elion is not necessarily a covenant name of God. So that begins to target even better the people that this psalm um, is written for or the people that will be blessed through this psalm. It says, he who dwells in the secret place of Elion. Elion, not necessarily a covenant name of God. That begins to tell me that you may have made a decision to dwell in the secret place, but you may not have gotten the kind of relationship with God that lets you really know the fullness of your covenant. You may not be a mature Christian. You may just have gotten born again yesterday. If you just got born again yesterday, you are one of those this psalm is referred to because you have made a decision to dwell. You've made a decision to be permanent. So this psalm, as much as it is not written for yo-yo Christians, it's also not written, written for the pastor alone, or neither is it written for the very mature Christian, or for the one who knows his covenant in and out. No, you may just be a babe in the Lord, but you have made a choice. You've made a decision to surrender to the overwhelming majesty of God. You've made a decision to surrender to the exaltedness of God. You are he who dwells, he who abides, he who is married, he who settles in the secret place of Elion, the overwhelmingly majestic God. Hallelujah. So what happens when you make a decision to stay in the secret place, in the covering, in the shelter of the Most High? Let me say this. Many times when we, we think of the secret place or the shelter, you know, we think of a place where you, are, you run and you cower in fear or, you know, you're afraid and you run there. No, 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 that's not what happens in the secret place of the Most High. That's not what happens in the covering or the secrecy or the shelter of the Most High. Let's turn to Psalm 27 and verse 4. Let me show you something. Psalm 27 and verse 4. It says, One thing I have desired of the Lord, that will I seek that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to behold the beauty of the Lord and to inquire in his temple. Again, from this Psalm 27 and verse 4, you can see that the person has made a choice. You're watching me, child of God. Have you made a decision to surrender yourself to Elion? You may not know everything about your covenant, but have you made a choice to be submitted to Elion, the Most High God? Have you made a choice to... to, to to dwell in his secret place. When you make that decision, one thing I have desired of the Lord, that, and that will I seek, you see, I've made a decision, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life. And then what happens? It says to behold the beauty of the Lord and to inquire in his temple. Hallelujah. To behold the beauty of the Lord, to behold the beauty of the Lord and to inquire in his temple. So the secret place is not a place of fear. It's a place where two vital things happen. One, it's a place where romance with God in worship takes place. You are in 
the secret place of the Most High. You are in the house of the Lord and you behold his beauty. And you see how awesome this God is. You see how beautiful he is. You look into his eyes and all you see are eyes swimming with love for you. Eyes swimming with mercy for you. Eyes swimming with compassion for you. Eyes swimming with a good future and a good hope for you. And you say, I will romance with this God in the secret place. I will romance with him in worship. I will look upon his beauty. I will behold his, his overwhelming majesty. That's one thing that happens in the secret place. It says, and to inquire in his temple. And to inquire in his temple. So the second thing that happens is you inquire. And to inquire means to seek, to consider, to search out. Look at another meaning of that word inquire. It means to plow. To plow is the way a farmer digs the ground. So to plow, to seek, to inquire. I love the word of God. And when I come into the secret place of the Most High, when I behold his beauty, I begin to plow into the word of God. I begin to dig into the word of God. I begin to see the wonderful things that this awesome God has told me about himself and told me about my covenant. Remember, he's just early on to me. I may not know all about my covenant with him, but I do know that he is the most high God. And that's all it takes. I've made that decision to stay in his secret place. And like I said, two things happen. You romance with him in worship and you begin to have romance with his word and begin to seek out the truth of the word of God. I tell you one thing, child of God, all the power you need is in the word of God. All the direction you need is in the word of God. All the deliverance you need is in the word of God. All, everything you need, all the wealth, all the prosperity, all the healing you need, it is in the word of God. But you've got to make a decision to come into his secret place and begin to plow and search out. And it takes time. Begin to search out in the word of God. Begin to seek. Begin to inquire. Surround yourself with people who have a passion for God and a passion for the word of God. And when you do that, several things begin to happen. Look at Psalm 32. Oh, I love Psalm 91. Look at Psalm 32 and verse 7. Look at what he says. You are my hiding place. You shall preserve me from trouble. You shall surround me with songs of deliverance, Selah. I will instruct you and teach you in the way you should go. I will guide you with my eye. Do not be like the horse or like the mule, which have no understanding, which must be harnessed with bit and bridle, else they will not come near you. That's what begins to happen when you enter a secret place. He says, I will instruct you. I will teach you. <laughs> I will guide you with my eye. I will guide you with my eye. I have a father who will instruct me once I come into his secret place. I have a father, God, who will teach me once I come into his secret place. I have a father who will guide me with his all-knowing, all-seeing eye once I come into his secret place and I begin to romance with him in worship and I begin to dig and plow into the word of God. Let's go back to Psalm 91 and look at what it says. It says, he that dwells in the secret place of the Most High <clears throat> shall abide under the shadow of the Most of the Almighty. Shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. Shall abide. At this point in verse 1, the psalm begins to zoom in. The very first part of verse 1 has told us who the psalm is written for. Now it begins to zoom in to the very major theme of the psalm. The major theme of Psalm 91 is that of protection. And so he says, he who dwells in the secret place of Elion shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. Let's look at that portion. To abide indicates being located in one place, usually for the night. I'll say it again. To abide indicates being located in one place, usually for the night. It refers to somebody who um, is being lodged as in a hotel. So it means to lodge as in, a ho as in a hotel. Now let's look at that word shadow. There are two ways to look at that word. In one way, shadow means shade. It means defense. It means protection. I'll say it again. Shadow means shade, defense, protection. Turn with me to Genesis 19 and verse 8. Genesis 19 and verse 8. It says, See now, I have two daughters. Genesis 19 and verse 8. See now, I have two daughters, Lot speaking, who have not known a man. Please let me bring them out to you, and you may do to them as you wish. Watch this. Only do nothing to these men, since this is the reason they have come under the shadow of my roof. Listen, Lot had two virgin daughters, and the angels at that time had come into his home, and they had come under the shadow of his roof. And Lot understood something about being under the shadow. He understood that the head of a home will do anything to protect anybody 
and would give up anything to protect anybody who came under the shadow of his roof. And in Israel then, it was a thing of pride to have virgins as daughters. And Lot was ready to give up his virgin daughters. Look at what he said. He says, I have two daughters who have not known a man. Let me bring them out to you and you may do to them as you wish. Only do nothing to these men since this is the reason they have come under the shadow of my roof. So when you came under the shadow of somebody's roof, the person had responsibility for you. The person had responsibility for your protection. The person had responsibility for your safety. Can you imagine if you have a guest and you have a guest room in your house and you know, somebody comes in and, you know, he's a guest and he, he may just be remotely related to you and he spends the night in your home and God forbid it, when you wake up in the morning, you know, you don't see your guest and you go knocking on the door and you wake, you know, you try to wake your guest up and you find out he's dead. Listen to me, it doesn't matter how much you convince the people that you were in your room all night, you are going to have some responsibility for that person dying in your house because he was under the shadow of your roof. He was in your protection. And that's what it means to come under the shadow of somebody's roof. And he says, he who dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide, shall take, um, shall be located under the shadow of the almighty and you know what this tells me just like lot was ready to give up his two virgin daughters for the angels who had come into his home god made sure that he gave up his only begotten son so that when i came under the shadow of the almighty i would be assured i would be assured of my protection when i came under the shadow of the almighty i would be assured of my defense when i came under the shadow of the almighty i would be assured of my safety he says look you can have jesus He's my precious son. He's my only begotten son. But do not touch Nkechi because this is the reason why she has come under the shadow of the Almighty. Hallelujah. He says, he who dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide, shall find, shall find um, um, a place to stay under the shadow of the Almighty. I told you that that word shadow had two dimensions. And I've told you about one, meaning protection. Um, shade, defense, and all of that. Oh, and look at the second one. And this one really, really tickles me. Look at what it means. The sh shadow there refers to the ephemeral nature of a shadow. An ephemeral means something that exists only for a day. Something that is short-lived and fleeting. <laughs> I'll say it again. Something that exists only for a day. So have you seen a shadow that stays with you, you know, 24 hours a day? No, no, no. The shadow might be with you, you know, at noon when the sun is shining on you and then there's your shadow. But then as nightfall comes, the shadow goes away. A shadow only exists for a day. A shadow is short-lived. Now somebody begins to worry and say, well, pastor, if you're telling me that I can come under the shadow of the Almighty and you're telling me that the shadow of the Almighty is short-lived, then are you telling me that my protection is only guaranteed for a short time no 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 and again i say no why don't you see it this way the thing that will cause you to go under the shadow of the almighty is short-lived that's why the shadow is short-lived whatever trouble will take you running under the shadow of the almighty that trouble will only exist for a day that trouble will only exist for a short time that trouble has an expiration date as a great man of god once said that trouble cannot last forever that trouble does not even have what it takes to last forever because God is eternal. God is the one that lives forever. And that trouble didn't come from God. That trouble does not even have the substance. It doesn't even have the DNA to exist for forever. It's only for a while. And that's why God says you can come under the shadow of the Almighty because the shadow exists only for a day. The shadow is ephemeral and you won't need it more than the period for which it exists because God is confident that that trouble trouble you may be passing through is only for a day. God is confident that that trouble you may be passing through is only for a short while. God is confident that that trouble you may be going through is short-lived. It may seem monstrous now. It may seem like a big mountain. It may seem like you will never get that job. It may seem like your husband will never get born again, lady watching me. It may seem that your healing will never come. It may seem like you may never know the answer to the questions that are going through your mind. But God says, if you've chosen to dwell in the secret place and remember, 
romance with me in worship and romance in my word. Now come under the shadow of the Almighty. Come under the shadow and the shadow is short-lived. The shadow is only for a while because that trouble is only for a while. Hallelujah. God's presence is so mighty in this place. I tell you, I have made up my mind to dwell in the secret place of the Most High. I've made up my mind to abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I'm not going to go anywhere else in the night times of my life. No way. Look at what Isaiah Chapter 30 and verse 1 says, it says, Woe to the rebellious children, says the Lord, who take counsel but not of me, and who devise plans but not of my spirit, that they may add sin to sin, who walk to go down to Egypt, and have not asked my advice to strengthen themselves in the strength of Pharaoh. Egypt is, is, is symbolic of the world, and to trust in the shadow of Egypt. Therefore, the strength of Pharaoh shall be your shame, and trust in the shadow of Egypt shall be your humiliation. God says, I have a hotel for you. And why do you want to go to Egypt when I have a place for you to come under? He says, why do you trust in the shadow of Egypt? Why do you trust in the economic system of this world? Why do you trust in what the traditions of your village say? Why do you trust in all your fears? Why do you trust in what the economy and all kinds of the doctors have to say to you? Why do you trust in the shadow of Egypt? Why don't you trust in the shadow of the Almighty? Why don't you trust in the shadow of the Almighty? Remember, we said to abide means to lodge us in a hotel. Can you imagine if you have a paid reservation in a five-star hotel, a luxurious host hotel, a, a world-class hotel, and God says, here is the key of the room. You have a world-class reservation. Come and abide under the shadow in my hotel. And you say, no, Lord, I'm going to trust in the shadow of Egypt. And what you do instead is you begin to go to a crummy, cockroach infested, rat tenanted, smelly damp guest house and you say I would rather stay there. Meanwhile there is a paid reservation for you in a five star hotel. That is what so many of us do when we trust in the shadow of Egypt. When we trust in the, in, in, in the, in the systems of the world but God says to you you should no longer trust in the shadow of Egypt and in the strength of Pharaoh. You should trust in the shadow of the almighty and almighty is the word El Shaddai. Almighty is the word El Shaddai. It is the most powerful, the all-powerful, the true God. There are so many meanings of El Shaddai. One means mighty and unconquerable. Another means he's the God of the mountain. Another means that this is the one I love so much. It means he's self-sufficient, enough in himself. It comes from two words that means he is more than enough. He is more than enough. And this is the word that God used to speak to the patriarchs. God used to speak to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob each time he was talking about their covenant. And that's why their trust in him was based on their knowledge of him. Him as El Shaddai, the God who is more than enough. And I don't know about you, but in the night times of my life, in the trouble of my life, I'm not going to go to a crummy guest house. I'm going to go to a five-star hotel owned by El Shaddai, the God who is more than enough, the God who is self-sufficient in him, himself, the God who doesn't need anybody else's help. Because I know that when I put my trust in the strength of the Lord and not in the strength of Pharaoh, I shall not be put to shame. I shall not be put to shame. He who dwells, he who has made a choice to, to stay in the secret place of Elion shall abide under the shadow, under the protection, short-lived only for a while of Almighty God, El Shaddai, the God who is more than enough. Thank you, my Father. Thank you, my Father. Blessed be your name. You have so many questions about your life and life in general. Why? When? How? What? Who? And the list goes on. Sister, Jesus is the answer to every question and he loves you just the way you are. He loves you too much to leave you this way. He is knocking on the door of your heart. Will you make a decision for a change today? To surrender your life to Jesus Christ, the Son of a living God. If you want to do that, say this prayer out loud, meaning it from the depth of your heart, according to Romans 10, 8 to 13, and you will be saved. Lord Jesus, I come to you today. I believe you are the Son of God. 
and that you died for me and rose again just to save me. Come into my heart and make me brand new as you have promised. I will live for you all the days of my life. In your name I pray, amen. Amen and amen. Congratulations on taking the most important decision of your life. You are now born again and a brand new person. It has all happened on the inside of you. We can help you grow in your new faith so that what has just happened on the inside will surely be reflected in your everyday life. Please call us at 0700 Fresh Dew or email us at saved at freshdew.tv and we will be there for you. Romans 10, 17 says, So then, faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. You can order today's message and other past messages on our website store, freshdew.tv. It is available on MP3 and CD and also on MP4 and DVD just as seen on TV. Fresh Dew, giving you fresh inspiration and direction for your life. Thank you for watching Fresh Dew today with Pastor Nkichi Ene. We trust you were blessed by today's episode. For further information on Fresh Dew, please call us on 0700 Fresh Dew, which is 0700 37 37 4339. If you're calling from outside Nigeria, the number will be plus 234 700 37 37 4339. Our phones are open from 9 a.m. to 11 p.m. GMT plus one. You can also send us an email to info at freshdew.tv and we'll be glad to serve you. We also invite you to like, follow, and interact with us on our Twitter and Facebook pages at Freshdew TV and also on Pastor Nkechi's Facebook pages at Pastor Ketch. For more information on how you can partner with Freshdew and receive Pastor Nkechi's monthly letters and weekly MP3 gifts, please visit our website www.freshdew.tv Once again, thanks for being with us today and we look forward to seeing you next time on Freshdew to receive fresh inspiration and direction for your life.